Welcome again to Raspberry on a Boat. Today we want to take a look at OpenPlotter. OpenPlotter has a lot of programs to offer, so we will need two parts to cover that. Today we will focus on installation of OpenPlotter. We will install OpenCPN again, like chapter 4, but this time using OpenPlotter. And we will um, set up a Kplex server for AIS data. We will also integrate XYGrip to get weather data and then also open a grip file in OpenCPN. That's for the first part and we will do the other services of OpenPlotter in the second part. Let's go! So you know this from chapter 4, we will install the desktop environment on our SD card using PI Imager. We will put uh, the SSH file on and uh, afterwards we can connect with PuTTY on the command line. When you use the command line, start the usual things. So first thing is to update, uh, afterwards you upgrade, then you start raspy config. Um, to set everything you need, like uh, yeah, change your default password, uh, change your local, and so on. And afterwards, uh, you need to install XRDP so we can uh, also use the remote desktop environment. So let's wait until this is finished. And then we can start the first new thing. We install the Python config parser. That's necessary for um, open plotter. And afterwards, before we can install open plotter, we need to download it. Uh, there is a version available, the basic version, where you can use the PI image to set a complete image. But uh, I don't like that. I prefer the advanced solution. For the advanced solution, we need to download uh, the file. So this is, by the way, the command we used for the parser. Um, but uh, now we want to download the file. Here's the generic command to install the file, but there's uh, XXX because we need to go to downloading and take a look which is the newest version available. In my case, this is version 262 so I will download this now and when it's there you need to copy it on your Raspberry. I use uh, WinSCP for that so I log in and I copy in the PI home directory the file I've downloaded so the openplotter Debian file. When this is copied we go back to the putty. When we do a list we see that the file is there. So we can now use the uh, dpkg ins uh, package manager to install openplotter settings. And we're done. Done with installing the openplotter settings. So we can log in now with our remote desktop environment. Um, after you did the login, you might need to do some initial uh, settings. And when this is done, uh, we are ready to go and we can start the uh, yeah, open plotter settings. There's nothing installed yet um, from the packages itself, it's just the settings. So you will find it in others. And the settings uh, are a collection of programs with some configuration um, possibilities. I enable auto start so that settings will start. Uh, you need to add sources. This is done automatically. Um, and when this is done, you need to refresh or update. Let's go back and say update. And when this is done, we are able to install the packages. The first one we want to install when it's there, okay, it's OpenCPN. So we take OpenCPN, say install, and yes. We did this already together in Chapter 4 manual. This is now the automatic way. Um, I will also install Kplex already. And you might have noticed that this was quite quick installing OpenCPN. The reason is that OpenCPN is not installed yet. It's just uh, the configuration uh, which helps us to install it. So there is now the installer 
Um, and when we open this one, uh, we also need to refresh uh, at the beginning. And now we can install some specific parts. And we take the OpenCPN, we install this one, and now the real OpenCPN is installed. So when the installation is finished, we can start it. We find it in Others, OpenCPN. And um, yeah, it would change some units in the settings. And then I will define the maps and uh, or charts. It's called charts usually here. And because we did this also in chapter number four, I will accelerate this again. So I will define the base map. Uh, that's a, be a better resolution map for our complete world. And afterwards, um, I will copy the Baltic Sea maps. You can find it uh, on Open Sea Maps. Um, on the Raspberry and I will uh, yeah, put the complete directory on active so that we get all the open C maps. And now we need our AIS signal. So remember I have a daisy head PCB for AIS um, and last time we did uh, use the serial input. We will now install the program serial from Open Plotter, but this time we do not want to get the serial data directly. We want to use Kplex to create a TCP server. We did this in chapter two and take this from the TCP server. But to get our daisy head, we need to enable UART, means we need to disable Bluetooth. This is offered by serial, so it will offer enabling UART, disabling Bluetooth, we need to reboot. And now the um, port is available. So when we start serial again, we have a new interface. That's now our UART interface. We can uh, define an alias here and continue to set up um, yeah, our UART device. But uh, you can define uh, a data method and we take NMIA0183 and that's it. So we have now a, a virtual serial interface. Now let's start Kplex and when we start Kplex we can define an input and an output like we did it in uh, tutorial number two but this time with the graphical UI there's our DAISY interface you can give it a name but there's the port it's already this virtual port we need to use the normal port rate and say okay so in is defined now we need our out interface and yeah that's TCP like we did it also in chapter two and uh, we have to define an address here, which is localhost 127001, and the port, we take the default port 10110. And that's it. I mean, it's the same configuration, but in, uh, done in a different way. This time, same configuration as in Chapter 2. Um, you need to apply changes. Kplex is restarted with the new changes. You can also do some diagnostics here. Um, for example, we can now select the output and press diagnostics. If we see data here, it means that the input must work uh, and that the output is also working. So that looks good. We see some data. Maybe, um, I'm not sure if the baud rate, this is a little bit uh, fluctuating. But anyway, let's check now OpenCPN if it accepts this source. Last time we used directly the serial in chapter four. This time we take our TCP server. So we take um, TCP, we enter localhost, so 127001, the default port 10110, we can give it a name. And that's now our default uh, setting for the TCP. And let's take a look if we see some AIS information and I can already see some Boats. So AIS is there now uh, from the output of Kplex, not the, from the input of our serial interface directly. And that's important because our serial interface is occupied by Kplex. So we need to use the, the multiplex in this case. So working and yeah, we can do the next thing. One word about Kplex before we continue. Um, I love Kplex but I don't like the open plotter way, to be honest. I'm a little bit torn whether to use it or not because it is not that stable. That might be the reason, uh, the reason might be the daisy head because it's not made for daisy and uh, it's not tested very well with daisy, I don't know. 
but it's not stable enough. I had some issues several times. So at the end, I decided to delete the Kplex open plotter version and install it manually like we did in chapter two and that worked flawlessly. So my recommendation is to use the manual mode. If you still want to use uh, the open plotter one, then two hints, you can use manual settings and then there's a file which is called .kplex. If you are in the home directory of the PI, you can't see it. Yeah, you there is nothing in. But if you do a ls with a for all, you will see it there because there is a um, yeah point uh, a dot before the kplex, and that means it's a hidden file. So um, it's there, but uh, you need to know how to find it. And you can add also some manual settings at the end of the section. It is more or less the same configuration, configuration I use it. The configuration is not the issue. I don't know what the issue exactly is, but for me the manual version works better. Sorry to say that, um, but uh, don't get mad at me, but th I prefer the manual way. All right, um, next thing we wanted to look at is XY grip. Let's install XY grip. This is something which can be used to get weather data. I will install it now. Um, by the way, also OpenCPN supports these grab files which can um, yeah, contain and carry some weather data. So here's uh, the program. It's not that difficult uh, at all, but it has a lot of functions in. So when we start this one, you can um, download the grip file, but it will say, ah, oh, you have to mark some area. So we will do it. Um, let's go here somewhere. Uh, maybe that's a little bit too much. Um, what I don't like on this program is yeah, the quite old fashioned way uh, to navigate inside. So that's maybe not state of the art. Um, looks like an old programming language as well. I don't know which one has been used here. So when we are there, we can now mark the, yeah, let's mark this area here. And now you can say file download grip. And there must be a server configured, but there's a default one. And you need to decide a model. Let's uh, start with the GFS, no waves, but we want to have uh, the wind information. Here you can see the server status. Uh, everything is okay usually when you have an internet connection. Here you can define a proxy server if this is necessary. But let's go on and let's say download. Um, you can save this file somewhere, that's important. This directory is also hidden, but we want to use this also in OpenCPN, so let's put it directly into the PI directory. And now you see the arrows. You can, um, so you can see the content of the file and you can see the wind markers. You can uh, also move uh, the time bar here to see what is happening with the wind. And there's a nice functionality, this animation here, where you can also see this moving. It looks better in Windy or some other tools, yes, but you have it uh, downloaded and you have it offline. And that's yeah already nice, right? So when this is done, um, Let's take a look um, at OpenCPN. So we did save the scrap file. Let's start OpenCPN. And in OpenCPN you can, let's zoom out a little bit to our Baltic Sea. In OpenCPN you can go to the options and you, by the way, there is this plugin page and you need to enable this grip first, which is a default plug plug in, but you need to enable it. Otherwise you don't have the functionalities. And take a look at the left side when you press OK, then you get these wind markers. And when you press this one, there is this plug in and you can open a grip file. Let's open the grip uh, folder or the PI home directory is open and you can just take the file which we did save there 
And you might uh, not have noticed it, but there are already these uh, little arrows. And when you go to configuration, then it's easier to see. I will just put uh, a fixed space between those wind markers. So I don't know the English term for it. And now we see a lot of them. And you see that, yeah, OpenCPN is uh, showing these informations. And I can also move in time to see what the wind is doing. <clears throat> you know how these work with the force um, and uh, the wind force, which you can see here on the bars. Yeah, and now we have it also in OpenCPN, the grip files which we downloaded with XY grip. All right, that was another part of Open Plotter. Well, when I look at the time, I have to admit that we um, can't uh, finish all parts today. So what I want to show is also the I2C connection. And um, with that, you can connect sensors. For example, these humidity and barometric sensor I've connected. You can put this to signal K server, which offers the sensor as a signal K information. And you can even see this in open uh, CPN so you can uh, take a look at this uh, let's take a look shortly also at open CPN I put this on a dashboard we wanted to do the same also with the compass sensor and when we have this compass sensor we wanted to use Pi pilot so the autopilot so here you can see the barometric sensor and there will be a curve when this one is running for a while and last but not least we also wanted to connect GPS and all this is too much for our tutorial today, but take this as a teaser for the next one. Um, so take a look at the things we did today and yeah, stay keen to see what we do on the next one and yeah, stay healthy. Bye bye.